This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a secondary processor kit into a Precision T5500 workstation. Um, so if you've never been to GreenPCGamers.com, you should definitely check it out. In the description of this video, we're going to post our T5500 blog page. And that's going to be an awesome resource for you um, if you want some upgrade ideas for your T5500 workstation to optimize it for gaming. Uh, we picked the high clock speed processors, uh, memory, uh, graphics cards, hard drives, uh, and other peripherals, and, and all the content is free. Also, we do show you the link to a secondary processor riser board um, that you will need to install a secondary processor into your T5500. So if you haven't already purchased one of these kits, um, you'll find that on this website as well. Um, so let's get to our actual install. So um, we are going to match the existing processor that was already on our system board, which was an X5677 Xeon processor. Um, if you have not purchased the secondary processor um, and you're not planning on matching it, or, or if, you, if you're buying two, that's great. Um, but if you haven't checked it out yet, you can find out your model um, in the F2 setup, um, or you can go to system and Windows 7 or 10, and you can find out what CPU model you have so that you can purchase a secondary processor. Um, so we are also going to split the existing memory off of our system board. We had six 4 gig uh, 10600R modules installed on our system board when we had our single proc installed. So we're gonna install, uh, or we're gonna remove three from the system board, and then we're going to install uh, three on the new secondary processor riser board. Um, so we'll do three and three. We'll still have 24 gig of RAM installed, but we're going to have two procs installed now. All right, so um, the T5500 doesn't have two sockets um, on the system board like many other workstations do. So they do require this optional riser board. And so here's our T5500 workstation. This thing's going on nine years old now. And here's our riser board. And this is the full assembly. It has, bull, it has the heat sink, the blower, fan, and the board. Um, sometimes when, if you go to buy these, we're going to back up a little bit. If you go to buy these, sometimes people will sell them with just the board. Uh, but when you buy it, um, you want to buy it as a full assembly um, so that uh, you're ready to install your proxim memory. Okay, so like I said, we are going to um, install three 4-gig modules that we pulled out the system board. So we're going to have six modules installed. Um, here's our X5677 quad-core Xeon proc. We like them because they're high clock speed, which work uh, as well as they can for gaming. And here's our riser board. Again, ours got has the heat sink with fan and then the blower fan that cools the memory. All right, so that's what we're going to install. All right, so let's get to our install of the parts into our riser board. First, we're going to remove that blower fan that cools the memory. And then we are going to remove our heat sink. So there's four screws that we need to loosen to gain access to our processor slot. So there's two on this side, and then there's two on this side. So we are going to manually use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen those screws. You could use a power drill, but you then you risk snapping off those screws off of that planar board. Which, if that happens, you're in big trouble. You're probably going to have to get another riser board if you do that. So um, we like to do it by hand because we feel like we have more control. All right, so we're putting tension down on the heat sink because there are some springs on those screws. So by putting tension, we can uh, keep you know keep it from you know breaking those screws as well. All right, we're going to unplug the fan from the uh, from the board. Now we have access to our processor slot. All right, so now we can open up the retention clip. Now be very careful when you're doing this. Don't touch the pins. If you touch them, you're going to damage the board. Um, use your fingernail to lift up that uh, that bracket that locks the proc into place. Again, here's our processor. There's a couple notches that we need to line up with the system board. And once we line those up, we can drop this processor right into place. Very, very gently. You don't want to drop it onto the pins. We just want to connect it and then lock it back into a place with our retention clip. All right, now we need to add a little bit of heat paste right to the center of the processor. 
Uh, we use heat paste from Shinetsu Microsci. You can locate that heat paste, you know, on the internet. Apply a nice little dab right in the middle of it because when we put our heat sink back on to the processor and it heats up, that's going to spread evenly across the processor. So you don't have to do it all over the place, just right in the center. It'll spread evenly as it heats up. All right, so we're going to put our, pro or our heat sink back into place, plug our fan in. And now we are going to go ahead and screw our heatsink back into place. So we're going to do this diagonally, and we're going to put pressure on the heatsink as we do it because that allows us to, to line up those screws a little bit better. And then when we go diagonally, um, then it locks it into place so that it's easier to, to actually fasten the other screws. Once you do this, you'll understand... All right, again, we use a handheld Phillips, not a power drill, because it gives us more control when installing this heat sink. All right, now we're going to put our three 4 gig 10600R modules. We're going to line it with the notch and install them right onto this board. Now, again, we matched the modules that are on the system board because um, that you know avoids us from having issues like parity issues from different manufacturers or or having you know different speed modules in general because we want to run we want our system to run at 1333 megahertz and these modules are capable of doing that um, and our processors are also capable capable of letting those memory modules run at 1333 megahertz all right so we've got a memory installed we just need to reinstall our blower fan it clips right into place like so and now we're ready to actually install our secondary processor riser board so we're going to remove our side panel, um, just like that. Move that that lever, and it'll pop right off for you. All right, so now we're going to put the system on its side. We're going to show you two angles at installing this board. All right, so we do need to plug in this 8-pin power, and it plugs in right there. So you're going to line up the riser board with this black slot here. And you can see right here where it slides right into place. And then while you're dropping it into place, you'll stop and hold it, and then you'll plug your 8-pin power in. Okay, so once it's plugged in, you'll be able to drop it into place. It should slide in really, really easily. There should be no obstructions. It should go in without any issues. Otherwise, you're, you're, you might not have it lined up in the bracket properly. All right, so here's the other angle. We're going to rewind a little bit. This is a really good angle for showing how that power plugs in. So you plug it right into place, slide it into that black plastic lineup, and then you'll see how it installs right into place in the bottom here. So here's the other angle. So that might be a little bit better angle to see. All right, so now that we have it installed, we're, we've booted into Windows 10. Okay, so here's Windows 10. You can see that we have our two processors installed now. Before it only showed one. And we have our 24 gig of RAM installed. So everything's working perfectly. Uh, for some reason, you, you don't get video after installing this. Um, you may not have uh, connected it properly or it might not be lined up. Um, so try reseeding it. Um, if it still doesn't work, um, you're going to want to double check your processor step codes. Make sure you match them properly. Um, and then if still it doesn't work after that, you're going to want to contact whoever you purchased that secondary riser board from because maybe you have a defective unit. So uh, we typically like to bring you into the F2 setup, but this is actually our capture PC. Um, so we weren't able to do that, but this is the next best thing, which is bringing you into the Windows 10 uh, system utility to show you um, that both procs are working now. All right, so that's as simple as it is to install the secondary processor riser board. Um, definitely check out Green PC Gamers out on socials. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, if you like free stuff, we do monthly giveaways on GreenPCGamers.com. All you have to do is like the page. So go to GreenPCGamers.com on Facebook, like the page. And as always, if this video was helpful to you, please consider hitting that subscribe button. That helps us out big time. Thank you so much for watching.